All right. Let's get into this game. We have Lee Sin and Rek'Sai being banned against King In. So Lucid was very good at Lee Sin in their last series versus KT. So I think that's a no-brainer. Nautilus also going to be banned here. And Corky versus Chovy. It has to be one of the go-tos. And Talia versus Chovy. Those have not been Showmaker champions, so you're not actually picking apart Showmaker's pool. However, Azir has been re-enabled on 14-6. It's going to take close to Renata Glask, so it's just a free Tom Kench here. Send a Tom Kench. We are scaling Azir probably here. Nope. Twisted Fate for Keen. He has been one of the more notable Twisted Fate players alongside Doran in LCK. And we have Jax. Jax, 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 Jax into the TF. Still going to be a little bit hard, even if you can, in theory. That's probably for Lucid, though. Lucid's been playing Jax as a flex pick for them. Probably don't want to play it in Twisted Fate, even though you can uh, dodge the... Gold card. Okay, Poppy. Be taking away into the Callista. Makes sense there. I mean, Kenya's not a big Poppy player. The Maokai, much more threatening. They're going to take away Sejuani. So what is Kenya going to play? Like, all right, they're taking away the Jace. And it will be Rumble. R -r -r Rumble. So that should be topside. They tip their hand that the Jax is going into jungle. We are just going to take the Vi then. That's a much more Canyon style pick. And Azir. Yeah, the Azir makes a lot of sense. And we're going to play Aurelian Soul. Okay. Bot lane. In essence, guys, bot lane should be pretty passive over here. We'll see if they can actually stack Drakes. Uh, we can actually farm up on the Jax and the Aurelian Soul here. This should have pressure. This lane should have pressure for D+. Plus. Uh, actually, will this one? Twisted Fate. It's going to be interesting to see what happens to the top side. Very strong combo, obviously. You can gold card into ViQ, into ViUlt, and just lock them down forever. And the Azir, the Chovy special. Uh, very strong 1-3-1, though. And that's important to note here. With the Twisted Fate, and with uh, remember that when Gen G plays Azir, it's often a split-pushing Azir. As Chovy gets flexed into the side lane pretty early on a lot of the time. To some degree, DK really have Gen G's number, even if they don't win, it's always closer than it should be. True. That was true last year, and it has been true, you know, second round Robin and into this series. But most of the players on these teams have changed, right? So, like, Chovy and Showmaker is still the mid lane matchup, but, you know, now Canyon has swapped teams. Keen is on this team. Lahens is back on this team, right? So there's been a lot of roster changes. The majority of the players are different, so we try not to run with that narrative too much. This might be tricky. They hit level two. Oh, that's not great timing. Okay, let's take a look at this again. Who took that? Oh, I guess Kellen takes aggro. I can't really see it. Yeah, he does. That's really nicely done. So they take aggro. Abyssal Dive goes up here. Um, but he takes the center root and flashes before it actually roots him and it stays out of range. Lucid takes it, but he's able to leap strike out. So Lucid doesn't even have to use flash and they get a kill there. Unfortunately, Lehens is still here and he's the one who's actually farming, but they're doing a good job of zoning him out. All right, so Canyon, this is interesting. So Canyon actually... You know, he's not going to be able to play to bot side, but he's going to get five minute grubs here because Jax is heading down. We'll see if he takes one or all three. He should take all three, in my opinion. Yeah, he is. Okay, so the reason why he's going to take all three is because the combo of Azir and Twisted Fate with the way that Genji likes to split pressure on the map, if they get six grubs, they are going to destroy D plus with split push and side lane pressure. People often ask me, Monty, is six grubs a bait? And my answer is sometimes. But if you watch T1 play with six grubs and you see how effectively they play the map with it, or you see, probably I would assume you see this composition play with six grubs, like it could get really crazy, guys. I think the bigger part of that is that aiming is quite fed at the moment. The handshake is perfect. Oh, nice. Denied the abyssal dive. But now they know there are two people top. So Keen actually just TP's back into lane right here. He's pushed up. They know that Canyon's in pit because they see him with the pink ward. And they try and all in on this side anyway. So that kind of just triggers Canyon to go. 
Rumble here might have to flash away from this one. He will commit to it. Will he even live, though, as Flash over the wall? The Merc Tread's not going to help out in that case. So they used Canyon's ult, Flash, Keen's Flash. Kingen used everything, but now they get the split push set up. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Those six grubs, though. Wow, Kellen's, Kellen's been on point with this Renata Glass this game, guys. Yeah, Kellen's been playing really well with these handshakes all game. Handshake, uh, you know, uh, the play under the turret at the beginning. A couple of really crucial handshakes since then. All right, let's talk about this. So that gank in topside, though, and, and basically Trophy covering with Pays rotating into the mid lane means that, you know, basically right now, D-plus is spread too thin. They're actually going for Harold. This is a mistake, I think. So... You have to ask yourself, what is the value of a Herald, right? Like, you get gold from taking it, but then, you know, maybe you can get a turret, but you can't get any turrets because none of these turrets are low enough to take for Herald. So trading it for a tier two is just not worth. It's a, it's a bad trade. And this f***ing Twisted Fate is so scary in the split. So Canyon comes to provide his extra Void Grubs here, and you can see how powerful this can be. They don't get that tower unless they have six Void Grubs. Because they get the extra tanking potential of the Void Grubs, and they have it covered, and Canyon comes and drops his Grubs there. Chovy is 50 CS up, or 40 CS up. Crazy. And he's got the Nashra's Tooth. If he gets Lich Bane, he will just eat people alive in the split. This would be really big for DK. It's not the best soul, but it's a soul point nonetheless. Showmaker has his ultimate available, but they're very... Beautiful TP by Cho uh, Chovy to set this up. <clears throat> They get it for free. Oh my god, he stole it. Oh, this should have been free. I cannot believe this. Oh my god. How did this happen? They both smite at the same time? No. What? I don't understand. What did the extra damage? It was just a Sand Soldier auto? Sand Soldier is not... There's a Sand Soldier here, but it's not autoing. Did Chovy do something? Or did Canyon do something? Vi W detonation? Oh, that must have been... He autoed it. Wow. It's pretty bad by Canyon. Couldn't even... The, the third stack on his W, maybe? And Showmaker... Showmaker literally doesn't use ult to push him out. I don't really understand that. You could have at least forced Lucid's flash. Like, what the f***, man? Just push him out. You're not actually fighting this. Ugh. Terrible. Jovi should have absolutely zoned him out of that. At the very least, he has to flash to get the steal. The problem with D+, is that they can't get vision control. They can't, like, work their way into the Drake because they can't face check brushes with any of their champions. And they're playing into Twisted Fate, who can just pop ult and see exactly where they are and create a pick. Yeah, you, they can't. Oh, God, they had to use Counter-Strike. Oh, my God, Lucid! Lucid, why? You betrayed your team. No way! He just rooted everybody. Jumps on into his team. And, yeah, that's that's a struggle. Kellen is... Oh, my God. That could have been a complete disaster. Gets hit. It just shows the struggle. Like it shows the struggle. Ah, yes. Oh, this well, he's dead. Struggling. Uh there's no fate's call, there's no flash, there's no Kellen. Uh he did survive there with the Okay, now we can Baron. This is a beautiful game by Genji. <laughs> this is Monty's kind of game. 3 kills at 24 minutes. Split push central using TF ult away from the action to split push and get objectives. The dream. Is it a time for my macro graphic? It will be soon. Oh, I'm so excited to hit the macro blast button, guys. Oh! Alright, so you traded flash. Kellen has no flash again, though. Alright, let's check this out. So you're trying to make a play on the Chovy, but you have no idea that actually all five members of Genji are behind the Baron pit. Their positioning is super weird. So you think Canyon's there. They just showed vision. So right now, D-plus thinks Canyon is there, but they don't know that there's three other people. And they should su suspect, however, that Keen is in Destiny range. And so they got Giga baited in, and now they're all going to die. 
Showmaker had to TP in for this. Keen. Oh, the flash gold card. On to Showmaker. Oh, there it is. There's the lick. All right, Kenny has to flash out. Equalizer. Oh, God. Equalizer and Renata Glasgow just to disengage. So he sees the lineup, and they think they can get a good equalizer, but Chovy actually just dodges equalizer and pays, doesn't really stand on it, so they get no value. Kellen dies. This is beautifully played by, played by Genji. All right, that that was not so good. That was not that was not so good, guys. Up until that last part, when aiming still had flash and flashes him under the turret, and then he just gets annihilated by Rumble and Aurelian Soul. It doesn't matter though, because they still have six grubs, and so they're, they'll spawn eight void voidlings at that turret, and the next one. So they're gonna get the next one too. Holy shit, Gen G, seven turrets and an inhib. No. It's a bridge too far. Seven turrets to zero in this game. 8k gold lead with a five kill game. You love to see it. I love to see it. This is my kind of League of Legends. Yeah, that was pretty bad by Canyon. He got aiming's flash though, so who's laughing next fight? He's just going to do it again. <laughs> uh, no, he actually uh, again ulted somebody who had flash up. So Lucid had the flash up this time. You guys don't understand. This is just a this is just the way you get flashes every 45 seconds out of the enemy team because he is smart and he is going to now have two flashes down for the next Drake, which will be Soul. I'm joking guys, this is bad. But we could justify it that way. We could justify it that way. No, Jovi. It's alright, they still don't have flashes, guys. Look at how they play this. They get vision control of Baron. Are they going to do Baron? Hell no! Why would we 50-50 split? We have weak turrets instead. We have Keen. Keen can just split push with his three Energizer items. Canyon's just going to cover for him. And these motherfuckers can't do Baron. Because Keen will just port back. Amazing. Genji's too good. Lens Hands had a flash because he got canceled out of his Abyssal Dive. Canyon doubles back. And they're stopping backs. Canyon's going to go in. He's trading his life. Go, Canyon. Did he trade his life for the game? Oh, f yeah. Oh, f yeah. Oh, my God. Lahenz and Chovy play that so well. And he doubles back. Oh, my God. Yes. 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 Keen is a genius. I f***ing love Keen. He's my favorite player. Look at what a genius he is. Look at what a genius he is. He takes out both Nexus turrets, and but they see only three people. They see only three people. So they know that the Rumble and the Jacks are recalling. Look at his timing. He's like, okay, they got two back. Now, Chovy... Chovy is going to go in here. And he's just going to all in because Lahenz is there, eats him up right after using the ult, spits him out, has a huge shield. He's running. Keen is running. He pops his ult. Then the se the second it comes up, he pops his ult, doubles back, and then kills them. And now he can just win the game. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. All the Kleos. All of the Kleos to Keen for that play. Holy moly, what an epic play by Keen. This is my favorite game of 2024. This is my favorite game of 2024. F yes. All macro, six grubs, play the map, get all the towers. So the Senna's a little bit weird because aiming likes to take all of his team's farm. 
So you think he's going to be fasting on Senna? I don't think so. So I, I don't really know why we did that. Pays was okay on Senna this last game. Nothing spectacular, but did his job. All right, we're going to first pick the Vi away from Canyon. Well, how is he supposed to get their flashes now, guys? How is he supposed to get their flashes now? And we're going to take Lucian and Nami. Now, aiming has not been a great Lucian this year. Oh, my God. Pays, you're going to play Draven into this? Give me a break. I'm going to ban Rek'Sai. We're going to ban... I'm surprised Keen has been playing Rek'Sai in solo queue. I'm surprised this wasn't more of a priority. He's really want the Rumble. It's a little bit weird that you ban the Renekton. This is probably Rumble support, which is why the top lane bans are still coming in. I'd imagine this is a very aggressive bot lane where Lehens is going to be playing Rumble. Rumble Draven. That's why we're taking the Jace for the top side. Tilt still technically a, a, a flex pick, but Chovy has played like one game of, of Jace all time. He's like one of the mids who had never done it. You could take... We don't really need more damage at this stage, but the Jax is still a flex. So actually, this is a pretty good draft in terms of Gen G just hiding picks until R5. Because, like, this is almost certainly going to Keen, right? It's almost certainly Jace, Jax, Rumble. But there's a possibility that it's not. And so you have to respect it at the very least. So they're going to take Gragas as a counter matchup in the top lane for Kingen. Kingen's Gragas is very good. So the Jace might be a little bit of a mistake here. Like why, why necessarily ban the Renekton if we plan on picking Jace instead of just banning Gragas? That's a little weird. Take Ari for Showmaker. And, okay, we're just going to R5 Azir. Kind of boring, but it's last pick Azir every game for Chovy. No, we're going to take Tristana. Okay. Uh, Tristana just to provide pressure in the mid lane and to really push up the mid lane and probably to roam into bot. This game is going to end up being played through the bot side for both of these teams. Like you're trading, you're going to get dove. So they're like, uh, if we're going to get dove anyway, we need to do a hard trade. It's good by it's good by DK because they know the vertical jungling is happening. Oh, he took he took flame spitter at level two. Okay. A lot of times you take scrap shield. Oh, he stopped the level three. No, he's still level one. That's huge. That's huge. He stopped Canyon from getting level three. He doesn't have he doesn't have Q. Oh, I don't know if he can dive this anymore. Yeah, but he needs to he needs to like do one in and one out. That's actually massive by aiming. All right, he got three. He got three though. Flash. Okay, he flashes, gets both of them. Lucid's here though. How are we losing this? This is this is not possible to lose if we're Genji. It's not possible. Okay. Yep, not possible to lose. Okay. They are literally going into the flame spitter from Rumble. That it's not possible to lose that. Uh oh, uh oh. He doesn't have Counter Strike now. Oof. Oh! Check this out, guys. He uses the minion to get the extension onto his E to get the kill. Ooh! Beautiful play by Lucid. I don't know. I mean, there have been rumors that we would see Tarzan going to D+, but after Lucid's recent performances, I don't know if that's going to be true anymore. Oh, he tried. Oh, my God. They didn't give Pays the kill. The hands took the kill. So they're trying to make a play here using Vile, but they know Rumble and Draven are six now. And they have no idea where Canyon is. So this is pretty risky. Oh, he wasted Q. He wasted Q, guys. Oh, he has no Q. Canyon with the fucking huge three-man stun. Beautiful flash. Baze gets the money. 1,500 gold advantage for Draven. Keen's been doing okay in this lane too, in spite of the fact that this lane sucks for Jace. But beautiful play, beautiful combo by King and Showmaker. Oh my God, Kingen! Kingen! Oh my god, Kingen just having an, one of his epic playoff Gragas performances. This guy is fucking so good at Gragas in playoffs, but only in playoffs. 
this this game definitely a, a lot more bloody than the last one. I preferred the last one. All right, can they actually take the mid mid turret here? It's also like playing this game out as pays is so hard as Ulahan's not quite able to sidestep that one. Showmaker has just so it's also like and this is how you play the front line Lucian. The thing is, is that they shouldn't actually be trying to stop this because they know, like, basically they know that D plus knows that they have no ults and they have no equalizer. So they're not, they sh you know, and if they did, they would have dropped equalizer to clear the wave. But he just gets hit by charm and then calling. That's bad. That's bad play by Genji. They can't defend that mid turret. They should be playing in the side lanes right now. Tristana should be top probably. Yeah, it, it is it is tough because they also don't have anything. So a lot of the time when you play in Dilution, you have like a Nautilus or a Vi in order to punish him when he steps forward. But this game is very free from aiming. Like, there isn't really anything to stop him from just like being in the front of the composition and poking you out, which is exactly how Lucian wants to play in this meta. Showmaker, damn, such a good RE game. But he, this is really just free. The, the problem, guys, is like you you look at this and you think, wow, Showmaker and Aiming are having a very good game. But it, these, this is actually just a free game for Lucian and Ari because there's nothing to punish them from dashing forward. So they just get all of their damage out every single time. Yeah, this this draft ended up just being kind of sad from from Gen.G. They needed to win lane harder, but the Gragas really fucked that up in the top side. And then they hit some stumbling blocks like Chovy dying to Kingen as well. And they didn't get enough of a lead out of the bot lane. And just a bummer. It's whatever, though. Ah, okay. So here's how they engage. You wait for them to engage into you, and then you use your teleport to engage, to trade one for one. And that's probably about as good as it's going to get for Genji this game. Is this the Desperation Canyon engage? Oh my god, Canyon with the huge counter engage again? Flash counter. Man, his flash counter strikes have been so good this game. Doesn't matter though, because their comp is bullshit. Showmaker literally can just walk on anybody for free as 25 Magi stacks. It's impossible to kill him. Oh my god, beautiful charm again. Oh my god, Showmaker. Jesus. Jesus. Terrible equalizer. Oh, Showmaker, Flash Charm. Oh my god, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful fight. It's gorgeous. So good. Is Rumble actually that good in bot? Yes, he's very good right now. Well, is he? Oh, Kellen. The red buff, not enough to actually kill him. Yeah, they can end. All right. Oh man! Well, very clean game from D plus, but uh, that composition turned out to be absolute ass. All right, so I love this Lee Sin ban against Lucid. It's been very effective all series. That they're really prioritizing this Nautilus ban, and we are going to take away the Senna from Pays. Probably smart after that game one. Okay, no Kalista, Varus first pick, Rel not in the cards for Lucid. No, Canyon's played that a bunch of also. And take the Zeri for aiming, which has been one of his best champions throughout his entire career. All right, so now we're going to take away the Sejuani. Sejuani was banned in the second rotation earlier in this series. It has been. It would be a contested pick between Canyon and Lucid. 
Uh, Varus Rumble, extremely strong lanes. We're going to start banning out supports, most likely. We're going to take out the Azir this game and the Tristana, so attacking... Okay, so there's Rakan and Lulu. No surprise there. They want to play aggressively in the bot side. Could still be top Rumble. Obviously, that's a, one of Keen's picks as well. And we're just going to play Melio. Interesting that there hasn't been Maokai priority in this series. Lots of non-committal engage from Gen G with the Varus ult, Sejuani ult, Rumble ult. Corky was banned in game one. Corky now going to come through for Chovy and Cassante. Keen has played a lot of Cassante and Udyr, like many top laners this split, and they are going to opt into that matchup in the top side. Udyr does shove the Cassante in, can proxy farm, can provide that pressure. Keen will know this very well. Will be the Rumble support yet again. See if they can punish the Ziri, push her under it all, try and zone her off from the turret. Ari Vai seems good for DK. Yeah, it's a classic combination. Makes the charm free to hit. Uh, if you go ahead and Vi ult in, so that can be very nice. Sejuani Cassante in the top side, also a nice combination. But Udyr can be a little bit slippery to try and kill. All right, so they see Canyon in bot side using his ultimate, and then they just send it. Look at this. Q into this. So, Showmaker... Ults in. It's the charm. That's the combo. Very difficult to escape from. Didn't Pays run down all five games of the series? No, he was he's been fine. It wasn't his fault the comp sucked in the in the first game. Or in the second game. First game he played Senna, he was fine. He's doing fine here too. I do love this though. So we we went so deep and Showmaker stays around, and this is the power of the support rumble. Dude, I love I love Lehens. He's like, well, I was thinking about recalling, but what if I just all in the Ari instead? This guy's such a psycho. Oh my God, he did it! <laughs> I mean, to be fair to Showmaker, I don't think he expected that to do that much damage. Lucid just calmly doing Raptors. While his mid laner dies, too. He literally cues in. Look at this. He cues in, and he's like, he's just doing the Raptors the whole time. <laughs> I like how Canyon somehow gets here. In the end, Canyon actually recalls off his fail gank bot. And Canyon's here to cover. Somehow. Somehow Canyon gets here before Lucid does, and Lucid's at Raptors the whole time. Canyon also just walks up and spites his raptor, so Lucid got nothing. <laughs> it's so troll, guys. Look, Canyon cues in and just smites his big raptor. And then just swag walks out. Alright, we're blat we're coning. How did we get how do we get all these chemtech souls? This is fucking, how do we get three chemtech souls in a row? It's fucking wild. Man, Lahen's too good at support rumble. You you surprised Amy went ghost and not cleanse? I'm not. I think ghost is better here. He needs ghost to clean up the fights in the mid and late game. I think Clay, like he 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 should just dodge the chains of corruption, and then he can use ghost to actually clean up and dodge more skill shots later. Trust in the hands of aiming. That's what you should do. Why do you need cleanse if you just dodge? Oh, you weren't paying attention to the milieu. Yeah, that's also true. <laughs> Um, Serpent's Fang here, pretty early on. Pretty early Serpent's Fang. I mean, they have some shielding, like Vi obviously has shield on her passive, you have Udyr, you have Milio. But it's not a lot of shielding. Oh my god, they didn't pick him off. He had package. That's what I mean. Like, maybe you can get one of them. All right, aiming. Go, 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 go. Aiming, go in, you coward. All right, go over the wall. Yes. Oh my god. Dude, he flashes while doing his wall ride. 
Look at this. Ooh, sexy. It wasn't about getting there half a second earlier. He repositioned. He repositioned to get closer to Chovy. So he would have ended right here, but he end he would have ended like here. But he ends up over here instead. Right, so you can hit both of them. Because he has Hurricane. Probably not necessary, but you know, it looked cool. Showmaker making it over. All of this is just setting up for the perfect opportunity. How are they on Baron? As long as Pace doesn't make it close, it should be fine. And then we'll be able to pick it up. And that is a trade. I think SDK. Everybody on Gen G is like mid or bot. And Steaming is just pushing top. And I, yeah, Keen is very tanky, but like. Is he? The point is, like, he can't clear this wave. So. That Zeri's getting really scary now. What are they doing? Why, why are we splitting with Corky? Cassante cannot walk up and clear this wave. Why do we have no Varus? Why is Corky splitting? All right, here we go, flippers. Get your flippers out. Time for an old, good old game flip, flippy flip flip. Chovy has magic pen now. He's getting his package. He's picking up his giant Chovy package. He's going to slap him with his big Chovy package, isn't he? Lahen's on the flank. Poke coming in. Nobody actually getting hit by rockets, though. Oh, that poke landed. There's a Varus arrow plus a Corky rocket. Ouch. And King In just steps. It turns out Udir is poopy in the late game. He walks up to zone them out, but he ends up just being more fodder. He gets pulled in by Q3 and then hit by Chains of Corruption and then bursted super hard. Oh my god, King controlled this fight. Oh my god. Okay, all right, Jovi, let's talk about this. You're unstoppable. So the Violt is basically entirely wasted, and he's able to flash. He's still on top of Showmaker, still shooting all those rockets. Beautiful equalizer. Beautiful equalizer. Oh, the Violt is so wasted. Keen just comes over here to help. Pays flashes over the wall. Oh. Nah, they can't do this. This is desperate. Oh, no! Lucid's dead. Lucid's dead, so it's just free. Canyon just walks up and smites it. That's it. That's the end of the game. Are gems like Volley too weak to play top as response to Cassante? Uh, I mean, we have seen a lot of Volibear top. The Cassante's just much more versatile. But Volibear's very... He doesn't have a high skill ceiling. And he's way less useful in the mid and late game, in my opinion. An exciting end to a kind of boring game. Okay, so Zeri gonna now all of a sudden we have a contested Zeri pick here. That has been a Pays champion of choice as well. He's going to take the Vi and the Lucian Nami once again. Finally, Maokai coming through. Maokai has been banned. Wasn't picked in the last game, even though it wasn't banned. Lulu and the Zeri. So we're going to take away Showmaker's Ari. And his cat. Interesting, his Kassadin. He has played Kassadin in games this split, and he has looked good. Uh, remember, Showmaker is still a very good Silas player. Should that be available? That came out in the final game versus KT, but it was more of an R5 pick. So, as you, but I mean... He sees it right now. He could take Silas here. I think that's the danger, is like you see the Azir, and you see the Maokai, and you're like, ooh, it's kind of a juicy Silas pick. Rek'Sai finally gets through, even though it was banned for a lot of this series. Keen hasn't seemed interested in it. It was banned by Gen G. Or by Gen G. And they're going to take... Interesting, they're going to take LeBlanc. And why are we taking... Or Keen, I love you, buddy, but... Really? 
is ergot the answer? I guess this is what they had cooked up in case the Rek'Sai, they decided to drop the Rek'Sai ban. Remember to follow the channel, guys, or subscribe to my YouTube if you're over there. 378 days ago was Keen. <laughs> In playoffs, he played it in playoffs of spring when he was on KT. That's interesting. I don't recall that. It's interesting. I wonder how much King has practiced this matchup because I know Keen has been playing a lot of Rek'Sai in solo queue, so he probably has more practice in this matchup than King does. Is Rek'Sai top a thing now? Is it good? Yes, it's very good. She's basically broken because of her heal on her fury when she's burrowed so you can you can basically just perma push and win lane for free looks like a less free lucian game but still decent yeah i mean you have to respect the maokai w at least here and you have to respect maokai ult and you have to respect azir shuffle you know there was nothing he had to respect he could just dash for perma last game that he played it but maokai is the most the, the most important one you have to worry about so if maokai is not there it's still kind of free or tech is working yeah i mean he's got coal so it, it is working. It is working. Like, he's not losing. He's winning lane, and he's doing it without having to build, you know, be an Aatrox building executioners. I mean, Canyon is doing this while he knows Lucid is here, and Trovi's like... Hey, Canyon, I'm leaving now. Canyon's like, I will still do the grubs. Even though I don't have flash. Wow. I guess he just needed a little bit of extra money as now. The flash on in from Lucid. Canyon in a lot of trouble. You can't get away from the Vi as a desperate. Interesting decision by Canyon. Literally had every opportunity to walk away and full knowledge because Jovi was warding for him. What the fuck? Miscommunication? Did Genji lose this 3v3 with Chovy? Uh, I don't know. But regardless, the call was like, he should have just left. He should have left. Because you need distance to get the better Maokai ult with the longer CC duration. So you have to plan ahead a little bit. And like, Chovy was wandering away. So you just got to give that one up. You do deny six grubs. That is a good point because he stayed around to get the second grub. But again, I don't really see six grubs as having high value on D plus's composition. Like their siege is actually pretty shit. Oh my God, pays beautifully played by aiming though. That's that's cheeky right there. That is cheeky. He gets. Oh my God. Pays didn't react to the sweeper indicator. Yeah, he didn't have much time to react to it, though. Jane? Wow. I guess Keen doesn't really have any MR or anything like that. He flashes out. But Showmaker, damn. Huge amounts of damage. Sutter Sky was done. I got just had brown boots and uh, and black cleaver, so I guess he's pretty squishy still. All right, we're gonna make a play here on the bot side. Pretty deep TP coming in. They see it though. Pay sees it. Yeah, big overextension. Good call. Oh, pays. Oh, pays. You can get executed by this Rex side, buddy. Oof. Close. Uh, the 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 four damage from Lucian. Look at look. He just gets he gets to, look at that. He just gets to auto for free, guys. Look at this. It's just free because there's no punish again. King and his King and is zoning out Canyon here, so Lucian could just walk up and deal a bazillion damage with his energized items. Maokai is the only thing that they really have to worry about. And Vi LeBlanc, another nasty combo for solo kills, or for isolated kills, I should say. Just like we saw with the Ari and the Vi last game. 
interesting. Horizon focus LeBlanc. Okay. I mean, D plus shot calling looks a lot better. They really are like, you know, trying to create traps, trying to be proactive on the teleports, playing together, playing around Lucian, Chip, and pressure in the mid lane, not letting Gen G have anything for free. They look a lot better. They look a lot better in this series. Okay, at the very least, should be able to pick up the Ocean Soul. I, I, or the Ocean Soul point, rather. I don't think Genji should contest. I think you should let this one go. Well, they're going to try Lucid. Going for the blue buff. He's immediately going to be taken away and topped up by the... Oh, man. They don't actually get That's it. That's going to be the end of that. That gives a chance now for Gen Genji. Wow. And DK, at the very least, should be able to pick up the Ocean Soul. I am very I surprised. I don't think Genji should contest. That they, oh, Lucid cues in. And then they see him. What the fuck, man? What the fuck? He gives them the engage. They don't even have Maokai. He just cues into blue buff. Doesn't have Q anymore. And doesn't flash. Oh, my God. Oh, Lucid. Why? Oh, my God. Dude, that could have been the series. Like, not getting that Drake could actually just be the difference in this series. That's so criminal after you just made a play where you blew Canyon's ult and flash. Oh, that Drake was free for D+. Oh, my God. Dude. He could have just flashed out of that, too. Oh. Let's check out how this Baron actually ends up happening. King is just being super annoying on the side. I mean, it is a pretty bold call just to Vi LeBlanc a Baron. And then come back in later on. Hey, that's just a good sneak. That's just a good sneak. Cute play by Lucid and Showmaker. That was that was a good that was a good trick they pulled. That's actually some of the better macro we've seen from D plus. They finally getting their shit together when it comes to shot calling. What happened to Pays? <laughs> Jesus. I mean, there's just no counterplay because, again, Genji is not running a composition that can punish that. Like, they don't have, like, a Nautilus or anything like that. They just have the Maokai. Probably has to flash W in order to get that because the Lucian's range with Rapid Fire Cannon is so long. Dude, the damage from this Lucian is so annoying. Nice tidal wave. Nice. Oh, my God. Nice bubble. Didn't quite hit Chovy after the... Arm guard. Oh! Dude, Keen's ults have actually been quite good when he gets the opportunities. Yeah, it's fine. You just go for Ocean Soul in a couple minutes, then Rek'Sai never dies again. You know, Genji really should have tried to engage at some point in this game before this. Like, they, they played stupidly passively a lot of the time. Like, they just needed to send it earlier because they are definitely losing this game. And you can't just let them take two inhibitors for free and do nothing. Like, then you're definitely going to lose. They get the next Baron. They get Soul, and it's over. So you have to kind of make your last stand before they did. And you can do it. Like, you can absolutely, like, try and get a flank from Chovy with the TP. You know, try and engage with a Maokai ult, but... They just haven't been able to like group and make a play. It's kind of sad. Not a great game from Genji. Yeah, this this Lucian, Genji just has no ways to really deal with the poke damage that's coming in in either of the games they've lost to it. At this point in time, in terms of damage dealing for DK, Redemption, very desperate, our Genji. Genji just used Maokai ult. You gotta fight him. You have to go in. You have guys. You have all your flashes except for Lehens. Like, go in, please. Fight. Jesus. They literally do nothing at any possible point in time. They just roll over and die. Yeah, this was the first bad game by Pace. I agree. He wasn't bad in the other games. Okay, so back into final draft. <laughs> the Rek'Sai gets banned again. I guess we didn't like they got into it. Now they take the Vi away for the first time, but Lee Sin. Still going to be Nautilus and Senna and Callista. So Rel actually up and available this time. First picked away. And they're going to take Zeri Sejuani in response. We see Aphilios Lulu, so we're opting into the scaling. Oh, no. They, now, D-Plus did win with Zeri Yumi in game one versus KT. 
That's how I feel about Yumi too. Corky Azir, Twisted Fate. We're gonna ban Castadin. We're gonna ban Renekton. So we're gonna take away the Azir for Showmaker. He's been playing Grasp on it this split. We'll see if he does that again. Talia goes through. Talia for Trovi. Love that. And we're gonna play Cassante. Okay, blind Cassante. And King and not gonna play the Nar, which some players like perfect, prefer to play into the Cassante. We're gonna take Aatrox instead. We gotta go kind of fast through this one, guys. All right, so they should absolutely be playing through the bot side, Gen G. They have Aphelios and Lulu. Possibility for tower dives as well. They should easily win this lane. Aatrox doing a little bit of an evade here. This could be very annoying if you're jungling top to bot because Aatrox can actually just walk up and disrupt Rel's jungle. That's why I put the ward there is because he can just like start slapping her with Qs while she's trying to do blue and he can actually 1v2 if the Cassante comes, but he's not going to do that. They're just going to check and see what the Rel's pathing is going to be. Yeah, Pace has always been a very good Aphelios player. That is not going to be a surprise to any of you guys. I I'm surprised that... Abing wants to trade so aggressively in this early game, considering that, uh, you know, the Filios Lulu can be very strong in these early levels. Nice job pushing in already from Chovy. Uh, he, got, he got a couple of them, a couple of the small Raptors forced to use the smite. I think one of the big problems here is, again, like, how do you kill Aphelios, especially with the Lulu and the wild growth? You don't have good flanking champions. Like, you're you're basically trying to fight front to, front to back if you're D+. Like, maybe you can get a flank off with Aatrox, but the Cassante is going to be able to mark the flank and just ult you with Cassante if you get too close. And even if you do get there, having wild growth or poly is actually huge. It feels like Gen G is just going to get a nice front to back in every single team fight that they're going to be fighting. Unless Paze makes a pretty big mistake. You know, same could be true of Talia. How, how do you actually kill her? You you have to kill the front line first almost if you're D+. But that's going to be very tricky to do. Uh-oh. Is he going to get this? Well, he forced cleanse, but... Oh! Huge play by Chovy! Oh my god. That is like right after man chovy hit six they see lucid here lucid cues over the wall and we already saw showmaker go back kind of shoved out of lane chovy is hard winning his lane and the timing on this is so good guys they actually see talia talia goes over scuttle crab here so they know that this is coming in and they're trying to get out as fast as they possibly can canyon starts q then flashes to hit it. Instant cleanse. That's Captain Jack cleanse right there. And he misses crash down, but Chovy's already there with the wall. And look at Chovy. Look at the placement. He pops off wall immediate. He already has W going and then gets the E immediately. And they they don't, they don't even... Okay, well, Pace committed suicide. That was bad. But that Talia play was beautiful by Chovy, though. The problem here is, like, they're really all in on aiming Zeri. In case that wasn't obvious with you know, the Yumi as well. I mean, he needs to absolutely do damage in these team fights. But at least by having the Grasp Azir, they will have more of an ability to attack the back line of Talia and Aphelios. If you guys don't know, a lot of pr players prefer to roam on the cannon wave timers because it takes much longer to kill that wave, so you don't actually lose as much CS because it just kills the cannon and you get the rest of the wave. Uh, these are super late grubs, so you're going to have a very, very, very short amount of time to pick up second grubs. So you're going to have a very short amount of time to take further grubs. But you don't need grubs of your Gen G. This is not a composition that is going to be huge with six void grubs like in game number one. Cho V. The punish on the bot side. You love to see it. Fuck you, me. Fuck Zeri. Get fucked with a rock. Showmaker's here, but he decides, I don't, I don't want a piece of this action. Good, good catch up by Showmaker there. Played that well around the E&W. Oh, Chovy. Oh, the knockup again. Showmaker's in there. He's in there. All right, Kingan's on the flank. 
All right, King got Showmaker though. Okay, Showmaker's maybe dead. <laughs> nice job on you dodging the Yumi skill shot. That's crazy. What a crazy fight. Yeah, this is this is classic Gen G. They don't give a fuck about Soul Point, dude. This team stays cool for Soul Points more than any other team in the world. They do not give any fucks about Soul Point. Talia so rich, man. Uh-oh. Good trade if, if Lehens doesn't die. Beautiful play from Showmaker on the pace. And that's what you need to do. That's what I was talking about. You, you know, it can be hard to kill Aphilios, but the grasp, the grasp is here is actually working really well here, guys, because the grasp is here allows you to go in, and then you are able to clean up with the Zeri. Keen may have put Kingen on Pays's face there. Whoops, Keen. Keen, let's not Cassante ult the Aatrox into Pays. Mistakes were made, guys. Mistakes were made. Poor Pays. But he was the one who sucked this series, guys. Remember, he was the one who sucked. Not Keen, who literally pushes out and then drags him into Pays for Pays to take lethal damage. Kenya was just trying to peel for him. Man, Genji living dangerously on Soul Point, opting into living dangerously. He's going to go for Baron. Just do it. Just do it. You got two minutes. Just try it. I really don't want to force this Baron. Surprising. Oh my god. Oh, aiming. Keen. Oh, Keen. That was such a good combo from Canyon and Keen. Oh my god, that R3 hit two people. Jesus. You know, there are a lot of Cassantes in the world, but Keen does the most ridiculous shit on Cassante out of anybody. The number of, like, highlight Cassante moments this guy has is just crazy. It's so funny. They dodge the Yumi. And then he just says, fuck it. Forces cleanse immediately. And they try and counter Yumi ult. It's pretty, it's pretty bad that they face check that, though, that they got that close to it. They just mind controlled aiming into going into that fight. Okay, so they do get it for free just because they have priority after winning that fight. Oh, King and doesn't have TP and they see him in bot. Oh, man. Oh my god, huge play by Keen. Keen had three items now. Oh, they have a now they have a Mikhail's too on Lulu for Aphilios. Alright, so we're actually just going to start the Baron again. Basically exactly the same play that happened before. With Chovy on the wall there as they try and take it. It's the exa exact same play, including the Sejuani, like tossing out Glacial Prison. Timing is super good, though. It's so hard to kill Pays. It's so hard to kill Pays now. Between the Mikhails and the Wild Growth. Ooh, getting the Infernal Souls really huge. We're killing Pays in that back line. Chovy's walls. Damn, every time, guys. Every time. Dude, all of his walls in the bot lane this game have been so good. That yeah, might just be the end of the game. Now we're just going to go second Baron before we end. Really good Baron control this game from Gen G though. That's one of the underrated aspects of Talia is just like the wall is just so annoying. Like Poppy ult at securing objectives for professional teams. And the advantage to playing it in mid instead of jungle 
is that you can flank. Like, you don't actually have to be on the objective as the Talia. Whereas if you're playing jungle Talia, you can't wall as effectively because you're not, like, on the flank trying to separate the team from the objective. Because if you're not in the pit, then obviously you can't smite. So that's another re good reason to play Talia mid instead of jungle. Oh, Lucid caught by the R3 again. Really good kiting by Genji. You can see they're just all on the same page. You know what I mean? They're going to do some damage to Lucid, but they're not obsessed. They'll, they'll flash out and then regroup in Redemption, get some more HP, and then try and push out again with K th with uh, Q3 and Cassante, force a flash. Oh, my God. He can't get away when he's ghosting. Keen just coming here with all of the support from Lulu. Jesus. Wow. Well, that was a much more commanding game. I got a little bit nervous there for Gen G when they let the first three Drakes go, but I mean, it's so hard. As we saw, it's so hard to kill this Aphelios. Anchovy had a monster game on the Talia, like really good dive, setting up his team for success. Keen also really good on Cassante. Well, a bit close, guys. Gen G probably shouldn't have been uh, taking those games as close as they ended up being, but still fun.